All right, this is AP, AB, and BC Calculus. We're doing Unit 8, Section 3, which is using accumulation functions and definite integrals in applied context. So word problems, yay! All right, so the integral of a rate of change of a quantity uh, yields the net change in the amount of the quantity over a given time interval. So for example, if r of t represents the rate, uh, like let's say in who's what's its per second, doesn't matter, uh, at which uh, the quantity of who's what's its is changing, we can find the net change in the who's what's its from t is 0 to t is 5 by uh, integrating from 0 to 5 of that rate r of t. So if I wanted to find the total amount of who's what's its at a given time t, I would also need to know the number of who's what's its at some particular starting value. So let's say I know that there are 100 who's what's its when t is 0. Then the number of who's what's its, w of t, could be expressed as uh, the 100, which is how many I started with, plus the integral from 0 to t, right, where t is the time, see how the t is the same as the w of t, the integral of r of x dx, which is not t. So here, the 100 is the amount I started with, and this whole integrand, right, the integral and the integrand represents the net change from 0 to time t. Notice that whatever uh, constant is being used in the integrand, can't be the same as the constant in the bound, and that the constant that's in the bound should be the same uh, as the one inside that w of t function. So let's kind of walk through the logic of how this works. So let's use a really simple example to walk through why this makes sense, and we're going to do this simple example with like fourth grade math, and then we're going to talk about how it works in a calculus context. So fourth grade math question. Cars are pulling into a parking lot at a constant rate, p of t, uh, of three cars per minute. So p of t is just three cars per minute. How many cars have pulled into the lot after eight minutes? Well, if you were a fourth grader in math, you'd say, cool, there were eight minutes, three cars came in all of those eight minutes, so three, uh, so eight minutes times three cars per minute gives me 24 cars. Great, totally makes sense. Let's do it with calc. Visually, we can see why this works in a calc way. So, so you have your rate of change P of T is constant three, it's this red line right here, right? So that's your rate curve, right? Um, the y-axis is the rate of change, right, because p of t is, is, is the rate of change, so cars per minute. Uh, the x-axis is time in minutes, right? If I wanted you to integrate, right, if you were to integrate from 0 to 8 of p of t dt, right, which is what I just told you to do on the last slide if you were trying to find the net change in a quantity, you would say, oh, that's that yellow area that I highlighted right here. Well, that's a base times height, right? The height of this thing is 3 measured in cars per minute. The base of this thing is uh, is 8 measured in, in minutes. So 3 cars per minute times 8 minutes is 24 cars. Again, we'd find that area, and it gives me the net change in the number of cars that were in the parking lot. Uh, so that's a really oversimplified example. Obviously, I gave you one where it's a constant rate, but it's to show you that the concept holds up, that this is actually a math concept you already know. All right, so if we can do this with fourth grade math, why are we sitting in calculus class? That's a fair question. Uh, the issue is that you can't find the area under every cur curve using fourth grade math, or even 10th grade uh, geometry, right? To find the area under really complicated curves, you're going to need to use integration either by hand or by calculator, right? So, so you're not able to do this uh, using all fourth grade math or all 10th grade math. All right, so we're going to use a calculator for this. Uh, your gallon of milk has sprung a hole. Milk is leaking out at a rate of m of t measured in ounces per minute. Uh, m of t is given below. How much milk leaks out in the first 10 minutes? So what we want here, right? So our job is to commu communicate understanding, right? So, um, so the amount that is leaking out of this thing in that 10 minutes is going to be the net change from 0 to 10 of m of t dt. And I'm allowed to use a calculator to do it. Now, I can write this because they called it m of t. So I'm going to go to my y1, right? And I'm going to go ahead and put in that my y1 is 8 uh, e to the negative 0.5 t. But I'm using x because that's my variable integration in the calculator. I'm going to quit out. I'm going to go ahead and do math 9, right? And I'm going to pick vars over uh, to function y vars, y1 with respect to x from 0 to 10. Right, and the advantage to putting it in your y1 is that you can then sort of plagiarize your own work a lot by just second entering uh, to get these values. So I'm going to get uh, that approximately 15.892 ounces has leaked out in the first 10 minutes. Right, so I need to communicate that this is what's required of me. I need to give the answer with units. If I'm asked to explain what the answer means in terms of its significance, uh, then I need to do so. Uh, here it wasn't, but that's the idea. All right. 
Bailey, the amazing senior wonder dog, appeared in a video that went viral. The rate of change of the views in thousands of views per day is given by R of T. How many views did Bailey get his first week? Okay, so uh, this is measured in days, right? Views per day. So, so we're talking about when T is seven, because in the first week, right? Um, so we want to find this total number of views by integrating from zero to seven, that's the first week, right from the start, and then over the first seven days uh, of r of t dt, right? And that's going to give me a value. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to my y1, and we're going to change this to a 500 e to the negative 0.3 t, but we use x, right? Uh, I check that that's right, I quit out, and then look, I can just hit second enter, oh, sorry, hit second enter, and then I want to change the 10 to a 7, right, because, uh, there we go, all right, so 0 to 7, hit enter, okay, so, uh, 1462.57, either 2 or 3, and then you need to say, uh, thousands of videos, right, because it's not measured in videos, it's measured in thousands, or thousands of views, not videos, sorry. Sorry, my brain is broken. Thousands of views, right? So um, you alternately could actually like multiply this by a thousand and move the decimal place, but the easier plan is to just answer in thousand of views, okay? Um, Bailey's very popular. He is kind of awesome. All right, so all the way back in 4.3, we talked about the classic rate in, rate out problems. Back then, you didn't know how to integrate. Uh, so all you could do was talk about the rates of change of the, quanti uh, of the quantities themselves. You couldn't talk about the net change in the quantity. You could only talk about the rate of change. So we're going to revisit those problems now uh, and ask different questions. So a lot of these are going to be the same problems we saw in 4.3, but we're going to ask different questions about those same problems now that require integration. What you'll see on an AP is that they can ask you both sets of questions. They can ask you things about the rates. They can ask you things about the net change. Uh, so they'll do basically what I'm doing here, which is presenting you with the same prompt, but asking you different questions on that same prompt, right? So prompt A might be something that you learned to do in 4.3. Prompt B might be something we're learning to do now. All right, so we're going to use a calculator here. So you have a leaky bucket. Inexplicably, rather than replace it or fix it, you've just decided that, your bucket, uh, that it's your bucket and you're going to make it work uh, as is. You spend 30 seconds trying to fill the bucket. Uh, let t equal zero be the time you start filling. So you're dumping water into the bucket, right, rate right in, uh, at a rate of y of t equals 5 plus sine of t over 2, right, in ounces per second. Uh, and water is simultaneously leaking out of the bucket at a rate of L of t, which is 5 minus 0 0.005 times the quantity t minus 5 pi squared, also in ounces per second. How much water is in the bucket at the end of your 30-second filling marathon? Okay, so... Um, in order to do this, right, so we, uh, in order to do this, we need to know a little bit of information, right? So uh, we start to fill the bucket, right? So, so uh, you spend 30 seconds trying to fill the bucket, and you start putting water in the bucket at t equals zero, right? So what this tells us is since you're starting to put water in the bucket at t equals zero, uh, this tells us that the amount in the bucket at t equals zero is zero because you started filling it then, right? It wasn't filled beforehand, right? So, um, so basically, I'm going to use I'll use b of t for the amount in the bucket. So it's not a rate, but I'm going to use b of t for the amount in the bucket. So what that means is that based on that notation, b of zero is zero. There was nothing in the bucket at the start when I started filling it, right? So if I want the amount in the bucket, right, uh, at 30 seconds, right? So if I want b of 30, what b of 30 is going to be, oh, sorry, that's not a plus, b of 30 is going to be b of 0, because that's how much was in there at the start, right? That's the start amount, okay? Plus, I gain the integral from 0 to 30 of y of t dt. That's the amount that I put in. That's the amount that goes in, minus the integral from 0 to 30 of r, uh, sorry, not r, it's l, my bad, l of t dt, which is the amount that's coming out. That's why I put a minus, right? Because, uh, so, so the amount out has a minus. So basically, my job is to set this information up. That means that my b of 30 is going to be a 0, because that's what we said b of 0 was, because I don't have any water in the bucket at the start of the thing, right? 
um, plus, and then I'm going to use my calculator to find these other two values, and that's fine. I am responsible for setting up this information. I'm not responsible for crunching the numbers to actually find it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and make uh, this one my y1. So we'll do 5 plus sine of x over 2. Right? And then my y2 is going to be 5 minus uh, 0 0.005 in parentheses x minus 5 pi. Close the parentheses squared and double check that that's all right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, um, honestly, if you want, you can just, you don't have to find these as two separate values, right? You can make your calculator do this entire thing. In fact, that's smarter than rounding, right? So the smartest plan is to physically type this entire thing into my calculator, right? So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and type this whole thing into my calculator as uh, 0 plus math 9. Right, and then I'm going to integrate uh, the first one. I always do. I always call the functions uh, y1 in the order that I was given them. So, like the first one I'm presented, I call y1. The second one I'm presented, I call y2. And that way, I'm less likely to get them mixed up. So, I'm going to go ahead and do math nine again, right? Uh, and this time, we're going to do uh, y vars and pick two. Oh, and sorry, that wasn't a plus. That was a minus because right, we're subtracting the amount that comes out. My bad. Okay, comma with respect to x from zero. 30, right? So that first quantity is the amount that, that I add, right? That's how much I integrate y of t to see how much water I add in. And the second amount, which is when I integrate L of t, is how much I lose, right? Uh, so I end up getting that this is a 0 plus the 14.8. Now, I did put the 0 in my calculator uh, when I did it. Um, but again, because it's 0 doesn't really matter, right? So I have this value. So my answer is 14.8. Four, five, or four, depending on which one you want. Uh, and this is how much water is in the bucket, and it's in ounces. So ounces, right? So it's the quantity of water. Make sure you're answering a question with appropriate units. So again, my job is to set this up and to give the answer with correct units. Those are my jobs on a calculator question like this. All right, so let's go ahead and try another one. Fletch is stacking tiny pumpkins in a red wagon uh, on a local farm. Mommy is removing the pumpkins from the wagon and putting them back on the stack uh, on the ground. Uh, it's not their wagon. You explain that to a toddler. Fletch is putting the pumpkins on the wagon at a rate of f of t, which is given here. Mommy is removing them at a rate of m of t, which is also given. Uh, if the wagon had four pumpkins in it at t equals zero, how many pumpkins to the nearest thousandth of a pumpkin are in the wagon after 10 minutes of this mother-son farce? So here's what I know. I'm going to go ahead and call w of t, uh, or I guess, yeah, I'll call w. We didn't use w for anything, so we'll call w of t the number of pumpkins in the wagon, okay? What I know is that the wagon had four pumpkins at the beginning, so I know that w of 0 is apparently a 4, and I know that I apparently want to find w of 10, right, because I was asked after 10 minutes. So my job is to say that what I want is I want this w of 10, to be w of 0, right, plus I'm going to integrate, so this is the rate that stuff's coming in, right, so I want to integrate 0 to 10 of f of t dt, and again, because it was called f of t dt in the problem, I can use that, right. Um, I had to label this to make it clear that I was calling this w because it wasn't mentioned anywhere else in the problem. Minus the integral from 0 to 10 of how fast mommy was removing the pumpkins, which is this, and then I'm basically typing it in my calculator, right. So this is a 4 plus uh, whatever values I get, right? So, so and you could even just say, hey, this is a 4. Like, I would still note where you got the 4 from. It's not a bad idea, but that's a 4. So I'm just going to type it on my calculator and get an answer, right? So I need to go to my calculator, and I'm going to need to go to my y equals and change these. So this is a 0.2 uh, math over to number. I want absolute value of x minus 10. Right? And then uh, for the next one, it's a negative 0.01. Uh, t minus 15, so x minus 15, quantity squared, uh, plus a 2.25, I think. Yeah, and double check that those are completely right. Yeah, all right, so uh, I'm going to quit out of that. And then look, I can be super lazy because I actually already did this work, right? Um, I, I just did this in the last problem. I can put the 4, right? Uh, I'm doing y1, but it's no longer 0 to 30. It's now 0 to 10, right? And I'm doing y2, but it's no longer 0 to 30. It's now 0 to 10, uh, did we, hold on, I think the last one was actually wrong because there's no 10 there, hold on. I think I'm missing a 30, hold on. Well, uh, let's do this one and then we'll go back and fix the other one. Okay, so I get uh, 2.333 pumpkins. 
Okay. All right, so for example three, uh, Bailey is a big dog. He can reach the counter and he's found a stash of cookies. Bailey grabs the cookies from the counter and deposits them in a pile. Riker is a small dog. Unbeknownst to Bailey, Riker is removing cookies from the pile and eating them. Bailey is adding cookies to the pile at a rate of B of T. Select values of B of T are provided in the table below. Riker is removing and eating the cookies at a rate of R of T. Uh, both are measured in cookies per minute, uh, and the equation of R of T is given here. Let C of T be the number of cookies in the pile at time T. Uh, there was already one cookie sitting on the floor because, you know, toddler. Uh, so C of zero is one. So we're going to use a left Riemann sum to approximate the number of cookies that Bailey added to the pile in the first 10 minutes. So for A, right, so A, what we're trying to approximate is the integral from zero to 10 of B of T dt. And we're going to approximate it with a left Riemann sum, which means that we, uh, we use the width Right, so here's our width, so that's a width of 2 times the left y value, which would be the 1, right, plus uh, the width from 2 to 7 is 5, right, times the left y value, which is 4, plus the width of uh, 7 to 10 is 3, times the left y value, which is 3, right, uh, plus the width, uh, oh, only wanted the first 10 minutes, my bad, so I don't need a plus equals, right, because we only wanted the first 10 minutes, so equals. Uh, so it's going to be a 2 and a 20 and a 9, right? So that should be 31 cookies. That's a lot of cookies. It was a big pile of cookies. Maybe it was like unit circle day in the Hogan household. All right. Uh, find the total number of cookies Riker removed from the pile in that same 10 minutes, right? So, so for B, we want to find the integral from 0 to 10 of R of T dt. Right? Well, R of t is something that we can integrate. So let me clean up R of t a little because this is non calculator. That's a 0.5t minus 3 plus 3. So I'm pretty sure that this is just a 1 half t or a 0.5t. So uh, when I integrate 1 half t, I'm going to get t squared over 4 evaluated from 0 to 10. Right? So that's going to be 100 over 4 minus 0 over 4, which seems to be 25 cookies. All right? So we know that. Uh, Bailey removed 31 cookies from the counter and put them in his pile. Riker removed 25 from the pile and ate them, so Riker is probably kind of feeling sick right now. And then lastly, using your answers from A and B, how many cookies are in the pile at the end of those 10 minutes? So the question is, what is C of 10? Well, C of 10 is going to be the initial starting cookie amount, which was 1, right? We're given C of 0 is 1, uh, plus the 31 cookies, right? minus the 25 cookies. So that's going to be 1 plus 31 minus 25, which should be 7 cookies. So there are 7 cookies sitting on our floor, uh, you know, in like the cleanest way ever, right? Totally 5 second rule. Dogs just removing cookies and throwing them on the floor. Totally safe. All right. Let's try P3. Same concept. No calculator. Uh, it's fall and the leaves are falling. Your neighbor Florence is a bit obsessive about cleaning up the leaves on the sidewalk uh, outside the house. Uh, she's also a bit obsessive about saving a parking space with a chair because South Philly. Uh, so leaves are falling at a rate of L of T in leaves per day, right? So, so that's what we've got here. Uh, Florence is sweeping up the leaves at a rate of F of T right here. That's leaves per day. Let S of T be the number of leaves on the sidewalk at time T. And we are told that originally at the start of this, uh, there are 41 leaves on the sidewalk. So a, use a right Riemann sum to approximate the number of leaves that fell in the first six days. So first six days means I'm only looking at, at here. So even though it goes up to 10, I only care up to there. So in part A, right, I want to approximate the integral of L of t dt from 0 to 6, right, the first six days, and I'm going to put an approximate symbol. So uh, R rem means I'm using the right endpoint. So the first interval has a width of 2, and the right endpoint is an 18. The second interval has a width of 3. And uh, so I already used the 18, so now it's a 25, right? Uh, the last interval has a width of 1 and a height of 37. So uh, I'm going to get that this is a 36 plus a 75 uh, plus a 37. I'm probably going to put these two together to get that they are a 73, right? 73 plus 75. Well, 75 plus 75 would be a buck 50, so this should be a buck 48, right? Uh, yeah, that checks out. So I get 148 leaves, right? So that's how many leaves have fallen. Uh, and then for part B, uh, now I want to know how many Florence has removed in that same six days. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 6 of f of t dt, right? Now I would suggest that you simplify f of t first because this is a 5t minus 10 plus 10, meaning it's a 5t, right? 
So uh, that's going to be a 5t squared over 2 from 0 to 6. So I get that this is a 5 times a 36 over 2 minus a 0, right? Uh, so 5 times 36 over 2, well, the easiest thing to, here to do is to make this a 5 times an 18. Sorry, it's a 5 over to 15. 5 times an 18, right? Because that's what 36 over 2 is. Uh, so that should be a 90, right? So Florence swept up 90 leaves, but 148 leaves fell. And then part C, uh, how many, oh, shouldn't say cookie, should say leaves, clearly cut and pasted that, my bad. Uh, so uh, how many leaves, right? So uh, I believe we used S of T for leaves on the sidewalk. So what is S of 6? Right, well, that's going to be s of 0 plus this integral that we found in a, right, uh, minus this integral that we found in b, right, because that's how many leaves were removed. So if we go ahead and, and use both of those answers, we're going to get that s of 6 is the 41 leaves we started with plus a buck 48 uh, minus 90, right? Uh, so I'm pretty sure that together these guys give me uh, a 189. Right, so it's a 189 minus 90, so I think that we should get 99 leaves. All right, let's do uh, two more quick problems. All right, so E4, also non-calculator, it's a pandemic. People are getting uh, in line outside of the Aldi, which opens at 9 a.m., T is zero. People are, just, are, are being led into the store at a rate of 20 people per hour. People are joining the line at a rate of J of T in people per hour, and the graph of J of T is, is th uh, two lines, right? One from here to here, and I gave you those two points because I know my graph is, is hard to see, right? Um, oh, actually, let me, I covered up the part where I explained to you why I mentioned it. I mentioned it because my graph is tragic, right? Uh, and one from six, uh, so one from here to here. Those are meant to be two lines. I'm just really, really bad at graphing things uh, sometimes. So, uh, so again, I mentioned it just to say that there are two lines. Uh, cool. All right, at the moment when the line is the longest, how many people are in the line? So, so we actually answered the question, when is the line the longest? We actually answered this in 4-3. Okay, the moment when the line is the longest, people are uh, going into the store at a rate of 20 people per hour. So this is the rate that people are going out of the line, right? And the blue is the rate that people are getting in line. So blue is the rate that people are getting in the line, right? People join the line. So the trick is that anytime the blue line is higher than the red line, the line is getting longer because there are more people coming in than, than leaving. So this is the moment that it's the longest. The reason it's the moment it's the longest line is that it's the moment when uh, my rate in, right? So it's the moment when my J of T, which is my rate in, equals my 20, which is the rate out. That's going to be the moment when the line switches from getting longer, because it was the line was getting longer when there were more people getting in line than leaving line, to getting shorter, okay? So the question then, so, so we're looking at T equals 7. So that's what we need. So the question is, how many people are in line at T equals 7? So, the, so uh, the time starts when people get in line, right? Like that's the moment that the time starts, right? Um, so they get in line starting at t is zero. So, so there's nobody in line at t is zero. That's the moment this, this thing starts. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use, let's, let's use L of t to equal the number of people in the line, okay? So I know that at the beginning, there's no one in line because that's how time started. It started at the moment that there was nobody in the line, right? Like that's, that's we start t is zero, uh, so all the opens uh, and people are led into the store uh, and they're also getting in line at that moment, okay? So we're going to say L of 0 is 0. How many people are in the line at 7? Well, L of 7, right? L of 7 is going to be how many people got in line from 0 to 7. So this is, this is the people that joined the line minus how many people left the line Right, so this is the number of people that left the line because they, they got into the store, right? So that's how many people are in line. So we can find L of 7 by finding both of these areas. Now, the argument here is that you can probably find the area under the red curve pretty easily. Um, this is a 20 times a 7, right? This is 140, right? So this, this right here, this should be a 140. And that makes sense because 20 people got in line uh, or 20 people uh, were leaving the line every single minute and there were 7 minutes or 7 whatever it was, seven minutes, probably seven minutes. 
Oh, hour, seven hours. That makes more sense. That was a lot of people to get a line in, in seven minutes. This one's a little bit harder. And this is why I had to tell you that I drew a, a nice happy line. Okay. So this one's a little bit harder. This is two trapezoids, right? So, so this one is an area of a trapezoid that is, um, we'll go back up to what I told you these points were so that we can see. Uh, so this is, this is a trapezoid that's 35 units tall. Cause I told you the y intercept was 35, right? And then I told you that this point was 25, right? So 25 and the base of this thing is six. So this is not a trapezoidal approximation. This is actually straight up a trapezoid, right? So, so we're looking at a 35 and a 25 and a six. And then this is another little trapezoid, right? This is a trapezoid that has a base of 20 and a height of one. So there's another trapezoid that has this 25 base and a 20 and a one. So we need to find the actual area of those two things. So one half the height times the sum of the bases and then the other one, one half the height times the sum of the bases. So just to be clear, notice that this is not a trapezoidal approximation. These are actual trapezoids. So this is a three uh, times a 60 plus this is a 45 over two. So that's a 180 plus a 22.5. So that's gonna be a 202.5. So the amount of people that joined the line, and I realize that you're probably thinking, hey, you can't have a half a person join the line, but we can mathematically. So the number of people that joined the line uh, were 202.5. The number that left were the 140. Since there was nobody in line originally, right? Uh, since there was nobody in line originally, unless I misread that, do, do, do. nope, okay. Um, yep, so, so since there's nobody in line originally, we get that this is uh, a 62.5 people. That's the longest the line gets is 62.5 people. Now you could add a, a line here where you say something like that doesn't make sense mathematically because it's half a person. So I'm going to round to 63, but you should still give the math mathematical answer unless you are told to round to the nearest person. Okay. All right. Last one. And then, uh, yeah, sorry. Last one. All right. So P4 also non-calculator. So you've decided to join a huge team effort to build the world's largest snowball. You and your team are packing a snow uh, onto the snowball at a rate of S of T in cups per minute. At the same time, the snow is melting off the snowball at a rate of four cups per minute. S of T is graphed here. Um, notice again, I told you my graphs are tragic. So I, I told you what these points are. And I told you that they're, they're meant to be lines between those points. Uh, okay. So if the snowball had a volume of 50 cups when you joined the team. So, so what this is saying is, uh, and we could use V for volume if you want. So we're saying V of zero is 50, right? And we're saying V of T equals the volume of the snowball, right? If you wanted to say it. So that's what this is saying. V of zero is 50. What's the volume uh, 50 minutes into, uh, into you being on the team? So notice that the snowball is melting, right? So I'll use, I'll use uh, blue for the melting snowball at a rate of four cups per hour. So the red is my rate in in this problem, right? The red is, is how fast I'm adding snow in, right? And then four is my rate out. Right? That's how fast the snow is melting. So for the record, if I asked you when the snowball is the biggest, it would be at 40, but that's not what we're asked here. We're asked uh, at 50, right? So uh, I probably shouldn't have said, did I say that you were only on the team for 50 minutes? Um, well, I guess it, let's see, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Yeah, I guess it did. All right, cool. All right, so you're on the team for 50 minutes, right? So in order to figure out how much, uh, what the volume of the snowball is, right? The volume of 50 minutes is going to be V of zero, right? Plus, uh, what, what's going to happen if you integrate S of T from zero to 50, which we're going to do in a second, and it might not be the most fun thing in the world, but we'll make it happen, right? Minus, uh, the amount of snow that melted off. Well, that one's pretty easy, right? So that's, you could, you could either write that as an integral, or you could just recognize that the snow that melted off is a rectangle. The snow that melted off is a four times a 50, right? So this is, this is lost snow and this is added snow. So what's gonna be hard in this problem is it's gonna be a bit of a pain to find that integral and that's not the most fun thing in the world, but we'll manage. Okay, so let's go ahead and, uh, so, so this should be pretty easy, right? So we were given this, we know that this is a 50, we can figure out this is a 200. This is what makes this problem a bit of a doozy, especially because my graph is not the best graph, but let's go ahead and make it happen. So let's, uh, let's do a different color. We'll do this for a sec. So this is gonna break down into a bunch of little trapezoids and it's not a trapezoidal approximation because this graph literally has uh, straight lines, right? So, so it's gonna be these guys. And then the hard part is gonna be this one to 50 because I'm gonna have to figure out what this Y value is, right? That's gonna be what's annoying. 
So let's just call these a, b, and c for a sec for the argument of figuring out these values. So a should be pretty straightforward. Um, I gave you the y values here, right? So um, I gave you the y values here uh, that this is a 9, this is an 8, right? So this is going to be 1 half. Uh, the height here is a 20, so the height times the sum of the bases would be 9 plus 8. So that's a 17 times a 10, which is a buck 70, right? For b, right? Uh, I'm going to have one half the height is again a 20, right? But here, uh, my bases are 8 and 4. So again, that's going to be a 10, but now 10 times 12, so that's a 120. What's going to make this tedious is finding this annoying y value, and I apologize for that. It wasn't my intent. It would have made your life a lot easier if I had used 55 instead of 50. Uh, if I had used 55 here, it would have been easier. But I didn't, so here we are. So, um, so I need this y value right here, right? So in order to find that y value, what I need to recognize is that I can find the slope of this line, right? So, so that last line has a slope. So if we just kind of, that last line has a slope of uh, the change in y, right? So the change in y would be uh, 2 minus 4 over 55 minus 40, right? So it's going to be a negative 2 over 15, right? So I can actually figure out as much as it's not fun at all, but I can figure out uh, what the what the value would be at 50, right? So I know that this last line, so again, sorry that this is a little bit more work than we like, but I know that this last line has the point 40 comma 4 and has a slope of negative 2 fifteenths. So y minus the y value equals negative 2 fifteenths x minus the x value, right? Um, so if I want the y value, it's negative 2 fifteenths x minus 40 all plus a 4, right? Um, we want the y value when we plug in 50 comma blank, right? We want the y value at 50. So that's going to be negative 2 fifteenths times 10 plus 4, right? Which is going to be, I can cancel a 5 out of this, right? Uh, and I end up getting negative 4 thirds plus 12 thirds. So that's no fun. I get 8 thirds. Again, totally no fun, but that's where we're at, right? So, uh, so I end up getting that that y value is 8 thirds. So when I find c, I get 1 half. Uh, this base is only 10 units. And then the sum of the bases would be uh, this base that was a 4 plus the y value we just found, which was 8 thirds. Uh, again, totally no fun, but we'll, we'll deal with it. Um, so this should be 20 thirds, right? Because this is uh, 12 thirds plus 8 thirds, right? So that's 20 thirds. Uh, so I, I get 5 times 20 thirds, which is 100 thirds good times. And then once I know those three areas, that's what my S of T is, right? It's 170 plus a 120 plus a 100 thirds, which again, I get is no fun at all, but that's fine. So my final answer then, right? My answer is that the volume at 50 is 50 plus, I'm going to go ahead and leave the 100 as thirds for now. So this is a 290. So 50 plus 290 plus a 100 over 3 minus a 200, because that's what the 5 uh, the 50 times 4 was. If I clean this up, uh, I seem to get that this is a 140 plus 100 over 3. That's a 420 over 3 plus a 100 over 3. So I get 520 over 3, and it should be cups of snow, right? And I can clean that up. You can clean that up more if you want. Honestly, this is not anywhere near as bad of a problem. If I don't give you 50 here, if I make this 55, your life is a whole lot easier. Uh, sorry about that. And that is it for the third unit, or the third section, rather, of this unit.